Thank you for watching this free video tutorial from MoGraphPlus.com. Please make sure to visit our website and check out our premium courses for Cinema 4D, 3ds Max, Arnold, V-Ray, Maxwell, Motion Graphics and much more. And also please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Vimeo to enjoy our free video tutorials. In this lesson we are going to be taking a look at the portal light options in area light which we skipped in our previous lesson. And that was because we actually needed a whole new scene to be able to fully understand and grasp the concept and why uh, the portal light options are so useful to have them. In this case, we have this very simple interior scene and instead of just going directly and talking about those two options, I'm going to show you how to do a V-Ray, how to do a interior lighting with V-Ray Force Cinema 4D. And as we do so, uh, you will see why we need to have those light portal options and why they are so useful. So let's get started. In this scene, as you can see, I have a simple camera with a V-Ray physical camera applied to. I have some white balance and some uh, ISO shutter speed and f-stop settings that aren't that important to know. We are going to be discussing them later on, but for now we have this very physical camera in our scene. And the first thing you need to do when you are actually dealing with an interior situation like this is to add a very physical sun and sky. So go to the light and add a very physical sun and sky. Now in the top view you can go ahead and uh, decide on the direction of your sun, but in this case I think we are good to go. So in the render settings, make sure you have your bridge as your render engine. In the option, enable show VFP window. And in the in the aliasing, I'm going to just go with the bucket render for now. And turn on GI as well. We can just uh, stay with brute force and light cache. But in this case, just to have faster feedback, I'm going to use irradiance map and light cache with its default settings, right? Perfect. Now, if I render the scene right now, let's see what we are going to get without any light portal, just with a physical sun and sky. I'm going to rename this to sun here and render the scene and see what we get. Okay, so here is our first render and there are so many problems. First of all, the render is so splotchy and the interior is uh, a bit dark compared to a normal daylight situation. We expect to have to see a bit more light and brightness in the room. So I'm going to just save this. Okay, and this is our first render. I'm going to edit this and let's name this 01. Now, uh, the first thing actually I want to fix is this kind of bluish a tone that the physical uh, sky actually causes. I just want to have a monochromatic uh, sun and sky. I just don't want that blue tone affects my interior lighting that much. So what I want to do is to go to my physical sun and sky and actually they have this simple option called convert to grayscale. So if you enable this, uh, the sky will be a simple grayscale sky without any color values, which is uh, perfect for our situation right now. And the next thing is uh, we don't have any portal light. Right now, if I just get out of my camera and take a look at this, we have this interior scene, but V-Ray doesn't know where to focus its sampling efforts. So what we can do is to put two portal lights on these two openings or these two windows and tell V-Ray that we want the sampling to be focused inside this room. And that's what the portal lights options are doing. So let me just create a V-Ray area light here, area rectangular light. And so here it is. And let me just go to my front view here and match this with this window that we have. So probably something like this would be enough. And let's put it inside a bit. Maybe something like this is good enough. 
and what I want to do is to go to its option and enable the light portal right now it's set to normal light so the light is acting as a normal light but if I set it as a portal light or in this case just let's start with a, a simple let's go with portal light for now now the light basically the color and its intensity will be ignored and the light will get and take its intensity and color from the environment that's behind it that's what the light portal does and thus uh, focusing the sampling efforts of V-Ray and V-Ray lighting inside the room and giving us a brighter interior scene. So we have our light portal here and I'm just going to, let's rename that to light portal 01, control drag and create a copy and that's our light portal zero two let me just make sure okay that's good enough and now if I get back to my camera and render the scene we should be able to see a lot of difference Okay, so here is our second render and let me just rename it to 0 to portal light. And if you compare this to our previous render, you can see we have a brighter scene, we have a less splotchy scene. You can see all of these splotches are gone basically because V-Ray knows where to focus its sampling effort. So we don't get all of that splotches have from our uh, global illumination right now uh, we have two modes of portal light if I go here and select these two light portals here uh, you can see we have portal light and simple portal light uh, when set to portal light basically uh, obviously as I mentioned uh, the light uh, will uh, take its color and its intensity from the environment and whatever objects maybe a foliage or a tree or something like that that's behind it and it's a bit more uh, kind of uh, computationally expensive but if you set it to simple portal light in this mode uh, the color and the intensity of the light uh, will be taken from the environment only and any other object that might be behind our uh, portal light or light portal will be ignored and thus giving us a faster render and in most cases I found this simple portal light uh, works better and gives a brighter overall uh, lighting so let's uh, set this to simple portal light and render and see what we're gonna get okay guys so here is our third render with simple portal light let me just save that and that was a simple portal light okay now as you can see compared to our previous render it's um you know a lot brighter it's uh, less splotchy and the render time is uh almost a minute faster 30 percent faster so uh, that's why i mostly use simple portal light now that's about portal light and you can see from a scene like this without the portal light we get to a clean scene like this with portal light options in our area light and finally to uh, kind of finish the lesson i just want to increase my gi or global domination settings and as you can see we have some uh, light leaks uh, in this part close to the uh, windows frame so what i want to do let me just quickly you don't need to actually understand this stuff but if you are familiar with very for cinema 40 and coming from an earlier ver an earlier version of v-ray this can be very useful so let's just go through our options i'm gonna probably increase the max update to something like 16 and as you can see my threshold is 0 0.005 dmc sampler direct illumination let's go to our iridian map and increase the hemispherical subdivision something like 80 and the interpolated 
samples to something like 2530. To prevent those light clicks around the windows, what I want to do is to enable this option called check sample visibility. And we're going to be talking about this later on in the GI section, but if I bring in my frame buffer here, you can see that, as I mentioned, we have these light leaks here, and that's because the samples on this side on the window uh, can actually see the samples on the other side, which is quite brighter, uh, and kind of average the information between those two samples will result in these light leaks. So what we can do is to enable this option called check sample visibility, and this way the samples on this side on the window wouldn't see the samples on the other side, uh, thus preventing these light leaks from happening. So let's just close this window and open up our render settings again. And uh, this time, I think we already just uh, let me go to my light cache and increase the subdivision here to something like 1200. Also, my color mapping, if I go here, you can see it's set to Reinhardt and the burn wall, burn wall U is set to about 0.35. Five. So we are basically using a combination of linear multiply and exponential color mapping, but it's closer to exponential at the timing because the burn wall is set to 0.35. We're going to be talking about this. And as I mentioned, uh, as I'm talking about this stuff after the main purpose of the lesson is finished, especially for the guys who are coming up from an earlier version of Vero for Cinema 4D. And I thought it would be more informative if I include this extra information about rendering uh, from this very uh, starting lessons, right? So now I think just going to increase the output to something like uh, 1600 and I'll be back when the render is finished. So let me just close this and start the render. Okay guys, so here is our final render and just one thing I actually forgot to tell you before starting the render, I have my multipass manager, I have the noiser as always with the settings that I've used in our previous lesson. So we have this here too. And here is our final uh, render. I'm going to save it to my history list here. And let's name that final render. And let's. There we have our beautiful final render, a simple interior scene. I showed you how to do the lighting and we talked about the light portal options. And here is obviously our denoiser pass. So in this lesson, we talked about interior lighting in Vero 4 Cinema 4D and how to approach it. And in that process, we also discussed light portal and simple light portal options in area light. See you in the next lesson. Thank you for watching this free video tutorial from MoGraphPlus.com. Please make sure to visit our website and check out our premium courses for Cinema 4D, 3ds Max, Arnold, V-Ray, Maxwell, Motion Graphics, and much more. And also please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Vimeo to enjoy our free video tutorials.